You could almost say that all the dried stuff in a red mole is replaced by something fresh in a green mole. So we've replaced, of course, the dried chilies in a red mole with a fresh chili in this one. Lots of tomatillos going here, fresh herbs. It's just a beautiful, light, and sort of springy tasting mole. Okay, so let's jump right into it, except that where I'm gonna jump in is gonna surprise you because I'm not gonna serve it with chicken the way that most people would do in Mexico. I'm gonna do it with roasted chayote squash. If you haven't fallen in love with these, I'm gonna encourage you to do this recipe because I think it might help you to fall in love with it. Now, a lot of people, including me, will tell you that you don't have to peel the chayote if you're gonna cut it up into small pieces. And a lot of times I will roast it to concentrate its sweetness. Um, and then the little pieces of fairly thin skin don't bother me at all. But this time I'm actually going to do these in wedges and there that skin would really get in my way. So I'm gonna peel them. They, they have this sort of slick substance to them so you gotta hold on really tight to the chayotes. Once you get it, I, I don't worry about the little indentions here. That's not gonna really do anything for us. But um, once you get it, basically peeled. It's got a flat side and you can sort of see how the indention runs this way. Well, that's the way that you want to cut it in half. So you put your knife down in the middle and split it like that. And then it has the seed that's right in the middle. You can just simply pry that out like that. And then we're going to cut these halves once we get the seed out. And, and I will say that uh, the seed is quite wonderful and crunchy, so don't throw it away. You can just chop it up and put it into a salad as a, a crunchy element. And then I'm gonna cut each one of them into three wedges like that. And then we're going to toss them with a little bit of oil and salt and roast them. I've got three more of these guys to do, so I'm gonna just power through it. Okay, last of the ones into the bowl. Now I'm going to toss them with some olive oil. You want to get a nice coating so that they cook evenly and don't dry out in the oven. A nice sprinkling of salt, of course, because that will just soak right into them and season them nicely as they're roasting. And then I'm going to toss those around just to make sure that I've got enough olive oil to coat them completely. And then I'm gonna spread them onto a baking dish here. I've got the oven at 425 degrees, so a pretty high temperature for roasting. I have a silicone mat here on the bottom of this baking dish, and you could put parchment paper or nothing at all. It's not gonna do very much, but it will, they will cook a lot more evenly if you will have something on the bottom, and then they don't stick, and you don't have to worry about um, craziness in the cleanup. So we're just going to arrange them here in single row and we're going to bake them for or roast them for about an hour. Um, I would start looking at them at about 50 minutes and um, uh, actually I would look at them at 30 minutes and flip them over because the part that's down is probably going to be uh, starting to brown nicely so flip them over at about 30 minutes and then come back to them at about 50 minutes and mostly chayote takes a little while to to roast, but that's about how long it'll take us to make this green mole. So I'm gonna slide them into the oven now and we can move on to some of the other ingredients. The first thing that we're gonna talk about, and I'm gonna get this oil off of my hands here. Um, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the poblano chili. So this is a large poblano chili, and this is going to be the chili in this in this mole. Um, it needs to be roasted and peeled for its flavor to come out in the best way. Um, you can do this if you have a if you're working on a gas range, of course. Put the burner on high. Now I have just laid this roasting rack here. Now this is a kind of funny piece. When I go to any kind of international grocery store. I'm always going through all the cooking equipment that's there to see if there's something that I could actually use in my kitchen. So I found this in a Japanese grocery store. And it is really intended for making things like yakitori, the little 
skewers that have, say, chicken on them. Um, and it's a really heavy duty piece. So I got that because I can lay it over this burner and then I don't have to worry about the chili falling off into it or not being roasted pro properly because I had to sort of balance it up there in a funny way that didn't allow me to get as much of it over the flame as possible. Now, if you've got a, uh, an electric broiler, which I have one on this oven that's right here, I could just put this up underneath that broiler. Um, get it as close as you possibly can so that it blisters and blackens the skin, which is exactly what we're after here. Um, and it does that on one side and then go in there and turn it. It'll take a little bit longer than what I'm going to experience on the open flame. But remember, our goal in this roasting is not to cook the chili flesh all the way through, but instead just to soften it while we are uh, bl blistering and blackening the skin. Then we can just rub that skin, that tough skin, right off. So this one is starting to get blackened in places, but it'll take me a few minutes here to get an even blackness over the whole thing. So I've let this one cool off just a little bit so that I could hold it in my hands and I'm going to come over here and rub the skin off once it cools down and I know a lot of people say to put it into a, a plastic bag but you really don't have to do that it will actually continue the cooking and it'll soften the, the flesh a lot more um, but for me I just let it cool at room temperature and then I can just rub off the skin like that and then when I get, I'm doing it at the sink because I want to be able to get rid of all of this stuff into my little trap here at the bottom in the sink. It'll collect it all. I'm going to turn just a little bit of water on there so I can rinse this off and get rid of some of the little black skin pieces. And then tear it open at the top like that. You want to pull out the stem and seed pod sort of all at once like that. That's, we're not going to use that part of it. And then rinse out those seeds. Pull those out a little bit there. Just it's very brief rinse. That just makes everything go a lot faster. So the next step with this then is to, uh, to cut it up, just to roughly cut it, because we're going to put it into the blender jar with all the rest of the ingredients. So we'll move right on to those things here. So poblano in. Now we've got our tomatillos and I'm going to take those out of their little husks and we're essentially going to make a tomatillo salsa. Now this may, or sauce, this may surprise you because I'm always the one that says that the best tomatillo flavor comes from roasted tomatillos and I still believe in that. But for this particular preparation, I actually like to boil all of these tomatillos and the onion that's with it and the garlic that's with it. So all of this will go into a pot over here with a measured amount of liquid. I'm putting two cups of water in there with these guys. And we're going to cook them just until they're barely, barely cooked. Since I don't do a lot of of boiled tomatillo preparations with you guys. Um, I'm going to show you how I would approach this. Now I'm going to cut them in half. That will just aid in the, the cooking of them here. And I've got four cloves of garlic. I've already peeled the garlic and I'm going to cut that in half too. All of this is going to go into our pan. I've got the garlic's here to cut in half. That will also help them to cook more evenly with all of this. I need a small onion. I have a large onion here, so it's going to be about half of that. And I'll just cut that crosswise like that. And we'll put our two cups of water in there. And we're going to let, wrong one, let these guys uh, simmer away. I'm going to let it come to a full boil and then reduce the temperature and let it coast along until they're ready, which will not be very long at all, about seven minutes or so. Okay, so now we can go on to talk about the sesame and the pumpkin seeds that thicken this. So what you really need to think about is that this is a 
this is a tomatillo sauce that is thickened either with nuts or seeds. The classic one is pumpkin seeds. That's the original one that dates back to pre-colonial times in Mexico that this wonderful sauce was thickened with pumpkin seeds. But of course then the, the colonial folks, the Spaniards, they brought sesame seeds with them. And now I see people doing these with this kind of a, a mole with pistachios, which are absolutely delicious, with macadamia nuts, with almonds, which is really, really good as well. So you can just uh, replace what I'm saying in this recipe with other nuts if you want to be more creative. But what I'm going to show you is one that I think is the absolutely perfect balance. So I would suggest that you try this one the first time, sort of get to know it, and then you can be creative after that. Now, I did leave off this salt. I wanted to put a whole teaspoon of salt in with the tomatillo um, vegetable mixture here. So before that comes up to a, a boil, this is going to allow those to get, the, the vegetables to get seasoned a little bit, and it's gonna leave us with this beautifully seasoned broth, which we are going to use then later on in the making of this dish. Okay, we've got our heat, our pan hot here. Uh, we wanna do this over a sort of medium heat. Don't go too high or you'll burn these little sesame seeds. These are hulled sesame seeds, so they're gonna be the ones that are the light, lightest color. Um, sometimes you will find unwhole sesame seeds, especially if you're buying them from a Mexican market or if you're in Mexico buying them. They tend to like the ones with the holes on them still. So I'm going to pour these whole sesame seeds into the pan. I personally like to do this in a dark pan because I can see a lot better what's going on here. Um, and we're just going to let these toast for a couple of minutes. We don't want to toast them too dark because our goal with this whole preparation is to keep everything light. We want to bring out their flavor by toasting them, but not toast them too dark. You notice that I've been tossing these almost all the way through to keep them moving and they don't get too dark in any one place, but they're now that just gorgeous golden, but actually it's my nose that's telling me everything here because I can smell that beautiful toasted sesame flavor. And those are gonna go into the blender jar along with the roasted poblano. And then I am going to turn that one off and we have toasted pumpkin seeds. Okay, so this is sort of the namesake of this dish because this dish can go by the name of green mole, mole verde, or it can go as the green pipian. And pipian refers to these little pumpkin seeds or any kind of seeds that you know, we find them a lot in the United States in this toasted form and you'll find them in the snack mix aisles. So this is, the, I'm using the one Ones that are already pre-toasted because that's what you're likely to find. But if you do find the untoasted pumpkin seeds, which you can find in any Mexican grocery store, if that's all you have to work with, then you'll do it in a dry skillet and you'll just toast them the same way that we toasted the, the sesame seeds, but they'll take just a little bit longer. Um, and you might see in, when you're in a Mexican grocery store that you can also buy little white hulled pumpkin seeds and wonder, are they just for a snack? No, a lot of people will make this mole with those and they don't even take the, the little hole off the outside of them. And they're super interesting and delicious, but that's for round two. I would say start with toasted pumpkin seeds and then you know you're gonna get this really beautiful flavor out of this and one that I, I can guarantee you you're really gonna like. Okay, while that's still boiling over there, or simmering I should say over there, let's uh, talk about the spices that are gonna go in here. Um, we've got a little bit of cumin, Mexican oregano, and black pepper. Since I always work with the whole spices, I'm gonna grind it. Now, I wouldn't have to grind that oregano in there, uh, but I, I just like to do it because I think it releases its flavor, so I'll put everything together. And then just crush everything with the pestle. Any kind of mortar will work for this, this thing, but I'm using the Mexican molcajete, a little tiny molcajete, which I like to use for my dried spices. And once we get that completely ground up here, 
I don't want this one to really be coarse at all. Um, we will put that into our blender jar. Okay. So all that can go in there. I always keep this little brush over here to brush out the spice molcajete. And now we're on to what I think makes this such a great dish, and that is the fresh herbs. Now, there's a lot of recipes out there that will tell you to use the leaves off of the radishes. If you've never cooked with radish leaves before, they're really delicious, spicy, and nice, and so you could use that. Of course, there's cilantro, there's parsley, there's epazote, which I think if you go to a Mexican grocery store and find epazote, it's going to give a very unique flavor to this and one that's very classic. If you were down in, in Oaxaca, you could always find hoja santa to use, or you can find it lots of places in Mexico, but um, that would be a delicious flavor in here. A lot of recipes will tell you to put a few uh, pieces of romaine lettuce in here for a very light herbal flavor. I'm going to do three different ones today. I'm going to use um, this cilantro and um, just put those down in here. I need about a, what I would call a gently packed cup of these. Tear off the, the tough skins, uh, stems at the end there. And then I've got some epazote. Look how beautiful this epazote is. It's, just a, it's, it's picture perfect stuff here. Tear off the de the hard stems at the bottom. Let's see if we've got about a cup. I think I could use just a tiny bit more, so I'm going to go to the cilantro here. And feel free to make this entirely with cilantro or a mix of cilantro and parsley too. That, those will all be good um, and certainly very, very available. But if you buy a bunch of radishes, if you love to eat radishes like I do, then take the tops of them off and that'll make you think about making mole verde. Okay, so we got our cup of fresh herbs to go into this and now we'll go back and look at the tomatillos okay this is exactly what i wanted them to look like um, so you can see here in the pot that this still has some of that lime green tinge to it but it's almost completely gone to the, the olive color that we associate with cooked tomatillos. And I'm gonna pour the liquid back into this cup. We'll use it a little bit later. We should get pretty much the same amount that we started with because we were doing this in a covered pot. And then all of this will go into our blender jar. And then easy mole to make because everything gets blended together. Now the blender jar goes onto the blender and we're going to make as absolutely smooth a puree as we possibly can. Okay. That was quite a thing. Now, I forget, failed to say one thing that's really important, and you can see some steam coming out of here. Um, when you're blending hot things, you want to make sure to take this central piece out of the top because otherwise it will build up pressure because of all that, that hot stuff, and the steam will make the top pop right off. And you could get burned with that. So please always take out that center piece. I, I do it just instinctively now because I have blended hot mixtures for a really long time. Um, the, this mixture was blended now in this very, very um, good blender. Um, if your blender is not as strong as say a Vitamix or one of the other super blenders, then it's going to take a little while and you may not be able to get it so fine that a little of it rubbed between your fingers. Um, may fee you may feel a little bit of the sesame seeds in there, but there's a way, to, a way around that and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So don't be sad if you don't have it as smooth as this one. Now I'm filming the bottom of this pan here with a little olive oil, just enough to nicely coat the whole thing. And when it is hot enough, 
to make a little drop of that sizzle fiercely like that. Then I'm gonna pour it all in there and we're gonna stir it for about seven or eight minutes as it sort of thickens up. And what will happen is that those, those pumpkin seeds will begin to expand and thicken the sauce really nicely. Now we don't want this, I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. I had it over medium high and I think it should be over about medium for this one. We don't wanna cook this so long that it turns a drab color. We wanna keep some of that brightness. So I would say cook it for seven or eight minutes and see it thicken up. And when it does thicken up, this is not like cooking a red chili sauce, a dried chili sauce. It's that requires real careful cooking down. This is just to concentrate the flavors, to bring the flavors together. And then we're gonna thin it with the broth that we have separated off from the cooking of the tomatillo mixture. You see how much thicker it is, but it still hasn't lost that really beautiful light green color. Now I'll pour in about a cup and a half of this. We'll have almost a half a cup left that we could use and thin out this mole verde at the end if we want to. I'm going to turn the temperature down to about medium here, and we're just going to let it simmer um, over that sort of medium low, medium to medium low. I'm gonna put the top back on just a skew to keep from too much evaporation happening. And we'll let that go for about 20 minutes. It's about time, I think, for this chayote to be ready. I'm gonna pull that out. Now, if you haven't had chayote before, and I know I sold it hard at the beginning, um, it is really beautifully sweet. So it tastes sweeter than anything you might call a summer squash or a zucchini. Um, it is in the squash family, but it gets this really beautiful sweetness. If you've only had boiled chayote, this is a, a completely different thing. And the sweetness really comes forth where is the boiled chayote tends to taste a lot waterlogged and people are always adding other flavors to it to make it taste like something. That's not what you're gonna find in this. I like to sprinkle the, some cilantro over these guys when they come out of the oven, um, just because some of it will stick in. They have a little bit of that oil still on them and I just think that it looks pretty when you do it that way. Uh, I, I told you that I was gonna take you down a different road here. This would typically be served with chicken. I personally love to serve the, the green mole with fish. It's amazing with shrimp, with halibut, with snapper. The list goes on and on when you're thinking about fish that can pair beautifully with green mole or green pepion, as some people would call it. Um, but I wanted to go down this road that would give us a dish that, for those of you that are vegan, for those of you that cook for vegans, this is an amazing dish because it's like a showstopper dish. You're not missing out on anything and we have left all animal products out of it. If you are going to make it with chicken, usually you poach the chicken and then use the broth from the chicken to make the green mole with. Uh, you could of course use fish broth in this. Let's go over and look at our mole which is now simmered for its 20 minutes. Um, I'm gonna stir it around just to see what the t consistency of it is. It has, I'm gonna turn it off now completely. Um, it has thickened up a little bit too much for me. I like it to be the consistency of say a, a cream soup. So I'm gonna take the rest of this liquid and thin it out with that. And then I'm gonna give it a taste. And the one thing that you'll know about this is that pumpkin seeds really demand salt and it'll take more salt than you expect in a dish like this. And we don't have any salt that's coming, well, a little bit of salt from the liquid that we poached the tomatillos, onions, and garlic in. So I'm gonna stir that in and give it another taste because this, I have to usually go back a time or two, um, adding the right amount of salt to it. 
I think I got to it now. Um, so that's a good thing because when you when when you don't have enough salt in it, those pumpkin seeds will taste so earthy that when you get the salt to the right place, they'll just explode with a balanced flavor. That's why we like salted pumpkin seeds as a little snack. Okay, so now um, let's put these lined up here on the plate, on this platter here. This can, I'm just gonna show you a platter presentation, but of course this would be really beautiful, um, both as a, a platter presentation and a plate presentation. And then I am going to ladle over our green mole, our green pipian here, still with the beautiful freshness of those fresh herbs all through it there. And then a few pumpkin seeds, toasted pumpkin seeds over the top of it. And I've got lovely little pieces of flat leaf parsley. You could use some cilantro on this to make a very springy, a very lovely and very traditional flavored dish. I hope you enjoy both roasted chayote, and it's good just on its own, but exploring the flavors of this gorgeous green mole. Mm -hmm.